Santorini is one of the most popular islands in Greece, for a very good reason. But if you're planning to come here, you really need to know that there is a pretty high chance that you'll end up getting disappointed. The reason why I believe that some people could get disappointed with Santorini is Santorini is beautiful and it is one of a kind but it's also very far from this idyllic and over glamorized picture that we're so used to seeing on social media Last year coming here for the very first time I learned my lessons and this year finishing up my 10 day long trip around Greece I decided to come back to Santorini and do it the right way. So here is my updated guide to everything you absolutely have to know about Santorini before you travel here. Literally insane, so many people. I was here at the end of September last year and it was definitely not that intense. Okay, I found the local bus. As you can probably tell, getting anywhere from the port can be hectic. With this amount of people, getting a taxi is close to impossible. There are taxis in Santorini, but there are not that many of them. Plus, they can be very, very expensive. So the best option is to either book your transportation in advance and have someone waiting there for you, or you can do what I did, which is taking the public bus, which is super convenient and costs only two euro. I did last year and the reason why I chose to stay here and not in Ia is because number one it is a little bit more affordable and I do think that Fira is equally beautiful to Ia but the main reason why I chose to stay here is because staying in Fira is crucial for the activity that I want to do tomorrow that thing was my favorite thing I did in Santorini last year and it's basically the reason why I chose to come back this year My room is not ready yet, so I'm gonna go and have some lunch. It is absolutely insane how busy it is, and I thought Santorini was busy when I was here last year, but uh, apparently it was nothing considering to what it is during the season. The best advice I can give you when it comes to traveling Santorini is don't come during the season, which is July and August and end of June, beginning of September is already pretty bad because there's simply way too many people coming here at this time of the year. It gets super crowded to the point where it's just ridiculous and you will have a hard time enjoying yourself. So I just got my room and I will show you what you get for around 50 euro in Santorini, 50 euro for a night, obviously. It is actually very cheap for Santorini standard. So this is it. Not much to show. Bad uh, little closet. I like that there is a, how do you call it, water boiler because usually you don't have that. So I'm finally ready to explore and I also change into more um, Centurini appropriate outfit Meaning this sarong that I found at the beach in Ias yesterday It was 10 euro only Okay, let's go Ladies and gentlemen, we're so close to seeing the view There it is Good to be back, good to be back so pretty, like nothing beats this view. As much as I like to hate a little on Santorini, it is also one of the most beautiful places on earth. Uh, when you stand here and you look at that mind-blowing view, you understand why so many people want to come here. And in real life, it looks even better than on camera. I mean, if you could only see what I see, this is for sure one of the most beautiful places on earth. So if someone would ask me if Santorini is worth the hype and if I would have to answer with just yes or no, I would say yes, it is worth the hype because the view, the, it, it's absolutely incredible. It's And it's super unique. It's not anything that you will see anywhere else in the world. But at the same time, I do think that people have pretty high expectations of what Santorini has to offer. And I can imagine that some people could get a little disappointed. It's 
so freaking hot today. I am melting. I think it's about 30 degrees and it's end of June, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know where I was going with this. This is like a pretty normal temperature for end of June. The reason why I believe that some people could get disappointed with Santorini is the fact that beside the view, the very freaking beautiful and super unique view, there is not that much else here that you can do. And before you hate on me and tell me that there are plenty of other things that you can do in Santorini, yes, there are other things that you can do, but all these other things you can also do on the other islands and they're gonna cost you like five times less and you're gonna do them with literally like one tenth amount of people. The thing about Santorini is that since it is so beautiful, it also attracts many people. Uh, and the prices can be high. If you want a nice hotel with this beautiful view, I would say that the prices during the season, even outside of the main season to be honest, they start around 500 euro per night and only go up from there. And even for that amount of money, you don't really get the best of the best. For me, Santorini is more of a sightseeing destination and not necessarily the best place to relax. So that's why coming back to Greece this year, I knew that 24 hours in Santorini will be enough. And I guess my point is to not really discourage you from coming here because as I said, I do think that Santorini is worth it. I mean, I came back here after all but my point is to encourage you to travel to other greek islands as well because i have seen quite a few of them so far and i mean i can literally not say enough good things about it that's that's the truth my plan for this trip is to spend today here in fira the capital of santorini and also the biggest town here and then spend tomorrow in ia Fira and Ia are located only about 10 kilometers from each other, so you can easily see them both, even if you don't have much time. And yes, they're both worth seeing. There are plenty of public buses that you can take that go every half an hour or so, or you can also take a taxi, which will be around 35 to 50 euro. My best advice though would be not to go to Ia during sunset time. I did that mistake last year and it was simply so crowded that I could barely see anything in Fira or in in Emirogivili there is way more space and sunset is equally beautiful. I think I'm slowly getting over the face of being in shock of how many people there are in Santorini at the end of June and I'm slowly getting into the gratefulness phase. Uh, I'm just so happy to be here. I mean it it's just so beautiful. Like what what can I say? It's just it's, it's one of a kind, it, it, it really is. So I might get a heat stroke if I don't sit down in the sun soon and have something cold to drink. No, to be honest, I think I'm gonna sit in the shadow. I just wanted to sit here for a second because the view from up here is so nice. All I want right now from life is orange juice. So beside the view, what is there to do in Santorini? Well, here in Fira and in Ia as well, you can go shopping, there are a lot of shops. You can go down to the port. In Fira, you cannot swim, but in Ia, I know that there is like a place where you can sort of jump off the rocks and swim in the sea. Another thing that Santorini is known for is wine. There is a lot of wineries here on the island, and in general, wine from Santorini is quite popular. So you can go on wine tasting tour. Uh, what else? you do i mean obviously you can go to the other side of the island which is like the less pretty meaning like the flat side of the island in general i would say that santorini is not really a beach destination but of course there are beaches here the most popular is probably the red beach and there is the one more thing that you can do that is my favorite thing to do in santorini which i will show you tomorrow so stay tuned i feel like i've already hyped it so much that you're maybe expecting i don't know one but no it is good it is really good trust me it is 8 p.m. and I'm about to do what everyone does in Santorini around this time. 
I'm obviously gonna watch the sunset. Watching the sunset is probably like the most popular activity here in Santorini. I mean, I, no wonder that the sunset really looks spectacular here. What I've learned last year is that Ia is definitely not a good place for watching sunset because that's where everyone goes. So I thought that I will just get out of Fira to sort of avoid the main crowds and go in the direction of Imerovigili. It's another little village here in Santorini, about 30 minute walk from Fira and the path from Fira to Imero Givili. I feel like I'm getting better at it. Goes basically right by the sea, so it's also just like a very pretty walk. But this is what I'm having for dinner. It's a pita with falafel and tzatziki, tomato, french fries. Uh, and I actually found this really quiet staircase, so I am now having my little dinner here. So the sunset is over and I'm heading home now. I really need to have an early night tonight so I can wake up early tomorrow as well because the thing that I'm doing requires getting up early. Good morning, it is the next day and I'm about to do the activity that I have been hyping so much since I got here. Can you guess what it is? The hike from Fira to Ia. The hike between Fira and Ia is a 10 kilometer long path that connects the two most popular villages on the island and it allows you to get out there in the nature and see the mountains and see Santorini from a very different side. So this is the final destination Ia and as you can tell it is pretty far. This hike was not only my favorite thing I did in Santorini, but to be honest, I think it was just like in general one of the coolest experiences I ever had traveling. And seeing Santorini in this more pure form without crowds of people gave me a whole different appreciation for this island. So this hike is really the reason why I decided to come back to Santorini this year. And to be honest, if I wouldn't be able to do the hike, I don't think I would come back here. Because I feel like for me, Santorini is like this beautiful thing that you watch, but it's sort of like behind the glass and you're not really like touching it. I don't know if it makes sense. So you can do that hike from Fira to Ia or to Ia from Fira. But the reason why I'm choosing to do it that way, so Fira Ia, is first of all, because apparently it's easier, like you go more down the hill. And then second of all, because when you like reach Santor Santorini, when you reach Ia, the view of Ia is really nice when you're going that way. So if you start the hike in Fira like I did, you walk in the direction of Emiragivili first, which is only about two kilometers, so it shouldn't take you more than half an hour, unless you're like me and you like to film yourself standing, sitting, walking, drinking, doing it all basically, then it's going to take you a bit more time. Uh, no, but to be honest, I realize I have so many of these shots that are a bit unnecessary, I guess. But yeah, that's what I like to do with my free time. Uh, it just makes me very happy when I manage to get an aesthetic shot like this so there is a slight change of plans since i happened to start this hike a bit later than i hoped for because i was a bit lazy this morning i'm kind of hungry already and since there's not gonna be that many food options later i'm gonna go to a bakery here since i think this is the last bakery before ia so we're getting ready for approximately what eight kilometers with no bakeries <laughs> Uh, so I think I'm gonna go and try to get myself like a cheese pie or something. So I think this is it. This is what I need. So now I just have to find a decent spot with a nice view to eat my cheese pie. I think that's not gonna be very difficult here. Not a bad spot for some pie eating, huh? Let me tell you if it's a good pie. And I'm pretty much cheese pie expert because I had pie like every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. Not the best pie I ever had, but still, with that being said, it's still a good pie. I mean, cheese pies in Greece are just always good, so. 
As soon as you pass Imerovigli, the landscape starts to change and you're slowly getting out of the urban area into the wilderness. And this is something I really like about this hike, that it gives you the opportunity to see those two very different sides of Santorini. So I think it's the perfect activity if you don't have much time here, but you really want to experience as much of the island as possible. Also, the hike is not very difficult at all. I would say that the biggest challenge is the fact that there's basically no shade somewhere in the middle there's also this cute little shop um, and it's literally like in the middle of nowhere and you can have something to drink there and fill up on water thank you and yeah but just look at these views they're just spectacular uh, the cliffs the shimmering sea it's honestly one of the most beautiful hikes i've ever done in my life and walking there it was just one of these moments in life when i just felt so alive and that is what i've been telling you about the view of here I made it to Ia. It was quite a hike. It took me almost four hours. I did have two long breaks though. Um, but yeah, I can definitely feel it now. So Ia is a little bit smaller than Fira. And I remember reading that apparently Ia is a little bit more calm, more suitable for honeymoon. But to be honest, based on my experience like last year and this year, um, it doesn't honestly seem that much more calm to me. Maybe it used to be the case and now Ia became so popular among tourists that it's not really the case anymore. But the overall vibes here are a little bit different. I would say that Ia does feel a little bit more like luxurious. I mean, even the shops here are selling a bit more uh, like nicer things, more like better quality or stylish things. And at Fira, a lot of these shops are just selling like very very, you know, basic touristy outfits with just like huge Santorini letters all over it. This is one of my favorite viewpoints in Ia. Here you can see the port from here and it looks really cool. And then right there behind me, uh, you have the castle of Ia. That's another really good viewpoint where you can see like sort of both sides of Ia. And I'm just gonna walk around the streets of Ia so good old and cry over the fact that I'm leaving Greece today so I decided to put my camera away here and just enjoy the last couple of hours I had in Greece. As much as I love making videos, I think it's also important to force myself from time to time to just be present in the moment. Uh, but if you do want to see more of my adventures in Greece, I have many other vlogs on my channel. I vlogged this whole trip. I went to Athens, Milos, Paris and Ias. So check them out and yeah, I hopefully see you soon. Oh my god, just look at this.